Black Alpha Network. Home of Black Excellence. Power to the people. Yes, indeed. All right, family. Hope everybody's having a good day. Hope everything's going your way. Hope you're getting a whole lot of money, family. And I hope everything's in good peace. Much respect, Black Alpha Network. It's time to go to work, fam, the way we do. I'm going to go ahead and put a question on the table for the family. You know, about a week ahead, like I said, it's getting late real early. And it's time for us to go ahead and put it down and let the world know that this is foundational Black American grassroots energy and can't nobody stop it. Vote against Kamala no matter who. All right. There's been a lot of discussion about this election coming up. Obviously, it's been one hell of an election cycle. Obviously, foundational Black American grassroots energy is stronger than ever, obviously. And right now, it's time, family, we get them completely out the pain. It's time to galvanize. You're going to see a lot of people running around here trying to speak on our name. You're going to see a lot of people running around here trying to paint false narratives. You see a lot of people out here shaming black American men and black American women. You name it. All right. Van Jones was just on Bill Maher and he said black folks is about to get con. Now, you and I know Van Jones don't speak for black folks. All right. We seen Michelle Obama come out and she's trying to dump this on black women saying, if y'all don't get it together, it ain't going to work out. And if your man don't support Kamala Harris, he don't support you. You see what I'm saying, y'all? Who disrespects black Americans more than the Democrats? That's the question I propose to the whole family. And I already know the answer, family. You've never been called more names. You never had your intelligence insulted more than by that party. Nobody treats black Americans more like they are their masters. They treat us as if we are their property. The Democrats have made it clear, y'all, is you either do what they tell you to do or you just ain't intelligent enough. And let's make it be clear. All them insults, y'all, they're not talking to white people. That's not who they're talking to whenever they throw out these little innuendos and these little statements. They're talking to us. When they're talking about women, they're talking about black women. When they're talking about men, they're talking about black men. The election's right around the corner, fam. They still ain't gave us nothing but food, all right? They done pulled out Eminem and Megan Thee Stallion and Quavo. It is 2024, family, and they are still giving black folks the same con game. It ain't going to change. And their approach to us, so we need to get even more solid in our approach to them, and that's running them out the paint. That's completely regulating them and getting them gone. That's what we have to do. And I don't care who you vote for. You got some black Americans who say they're going to vote for the couch. Good. You got some black Americans say they're going to vote for Trump. Good. Because the way I'm looking at it and analyzing it, family, there's only three things you can do. And two of them hurt the Democratic plantation. So that's what I'm all for. Hurting the Democratic plantation. Because we got to make it be clear, y'all. If Kamala Harris ends up somehow winning. And by the way, I want everybody to watch for the finesse. Don't get it tangled nor twisted, y'all. Watch for the finesse. Y'all remember the last election. The finesse is being watched, all right? They done spent trillions of dollars on immigration, and they spent trillions of dollars cosplaying us. They don't want to see their money go to waste. So there's a lot of forces in front of the camera and behind the camera that want to make sure that she wins. So we got to be very, very vigilant on election day, which we will. We'll be broadcasting live on the Black Alpha Network. But what we got to make it be clear, y'all, is at the end of this election cycle, it's going to be two things. Either you're going to have every woman coming to America saying that they black woman. You're going to have every woman coming to America saying they black women. Because remember, if Kamala Harris, that we've all done the research and it ain't even that deep. We've all did the studying. Ain't nothing black about her at all. And by the way, family, she gave a black pastor Southern accent again yesterday. So she then had what? 14, 15, 16 different accents, right? If she can tell us that she's black. And then Barack Obama can tell you she's black and Michelle Obama can tell you and Van Jones and Broken Buck Car Sellers. If the dominant society, exclusively the Democrats, can tell us that Kamala Harris is a black woman, if she wins the presidency, everybody who's not a black woman is going to come to America and they're going to be trying to put that mask on. Trust me. Trust me, family. And it's a long game. This is what's going to happen if they try to push her through. OK, if they try to force her victory in this election. You're going to have everybody coming here to the United States of America and they're just going to straight up take our history. They're going to take our present and they're going to try to erase our future in the damn process. It's right now. It's the Democratic plantation versus the black grassroots. And they made it this way. We was over here minding our own business, trying to get our reparations, holding down the fort taking care of ourselves because that's what FBA does. And they're the ones who want to veer in our lane. They're the ones who want to come over here and just start insulting us, family, every single week on your timeline, social media. They're not out here disrespecting other groups. I'm still waiting. They don't have no smoke for them because they know better. They following them orders, y'all, them slave supervisors. 
So what they've been doing, they've been sending out everybody over here to our side to disrespect us. This election has basically turned into the we're going to hate on black folks election. We're going to come down on black Americans. We're going to try to completely disrupt the black family. That's what we're going to do. The Democrats have made it clear, clear that's their agenda. That's their operatives. And they're going to push forward with it. So this is why we've been standing on business and letting it be known. You can only shame us for so long, y'all. You can only disrespect and insult us for so long. I ain't going to be too many simple Simons. I ain't going to be too many ignorance. I'm not going to be too many. You need to get it together, fools or Russian bots or who's paying you. I ain't going to be too many of them. All right. Nobody's going to disrespect our lineage, heritage and culture, y'all. And the way you look at it, nobody does that more than the Democrats. It ain't even close. The gap between number one and number two might as well be a football field. It's them who are out here completely disrespecting us. Remember all that win with black women stuff that they was talking about? How well was they doing that family when Janet Jackson came out and questioned Kamala Harris? Let's not forget this election cycle. Let's go back to Joe Biden. Joe Biden, when he, you know, was coming out here and he was trying to run, Joe Biden sat down with that family. And what they do, y'all? He had some fried chicken. Don't forget. No, 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 no. We're going to put it on table. We're going to put it on table just in case they don't want to, you know, they don't want to hear it, but we're going to make it be clear because I know they listening. All right. I know Democratic Shields is listening. They listen to everything I do. Everything I do, everywhere I go, every time I speak, there's about 15, 16 Democratic shields that pop out of nowhere. I know they're listening, so we're going to put it on the table. Remember, Joe Biden, first off, four years ago, told us we weren't black, ain't did nothing for us. And just a couple months ago, he sat down with that family and he shared a big bucket of fried chicken. That's how they feel about y'all black folks. That's how they feel. Kamala Harris, you know, you ain't black. I ain't doing nothing for y'all. Remember that? Kamala Harris been running around here left and right. She done pulled out the hot sauce. Not lie. That's not Hillary Clinton's hot sauce. That's Kamala Harris. She got her own thing of hot sauce. She pulled that out. Not to mention the Converse, not to mention the Timberlands, not to mention running around here with a fake accent every time she speaks. These people feel that we are their property. And if you go look at every single Democratic shield, that's what they carry out. This is why I don't give a damn who you vote for. Don't vote for Kamala Harris. And it's to the point, if you cannot see the plan of the Democratic establishment, or you're still carrying the weight for the Democrats, that you are an op of the black grassroots, the foundational black American community. All they got is Democratic shields and tethers on that side. And what we got, we got certified. So the choice is yours. And I feel right now that we're collectively on code more than ever. This is why they're trying to spin our words over and they're trying to say it's right wing and it's all that. This ain't right wing, y'all. This ain't got nothing to do with the dominant society's liberal versus conservative battle. This has every single every single thing to do with us as a community. We identify what needs to happen, what needs to occur. We're not going to wait another four years, family. This is the opportunity now. This is it. This is the dance. We're not waiting again to 2028. They brought in 22 million illegals, family. Get that right. 22 million illegals in three years. It's hard to do that, family, if you did it on purpose. All right. These folks done brought in millions of people. And they're going to continue to bring them in. Kamala Harris has had softball interview after softball interview. Have you seen anybody question her on immigration? Really? Have you seen it? She goes on this fake agenda tour about black men, which it really wasn't about black men. But she goes on the fake agenda tour and they never once ask her about immigration. You can look right now what's going on in the United States of America. And it is absolutely treasonous. The fact that they're bringing in all these immigrants and nobody's called her out on it directly. We're going to get real. Shout out to my brothers and sisters in New York City. I know what's going on in New York with the migrants. I just seen a homeless veteran. All right. Literally, a homeless veteran is on the street. He looks down and 15 steps in front of him. Some migrants are going up in a luxury hotel. You tell me that's not a problem. And then you tell me this. When was the last time you seen Holden Martin talk about that? You seen Joyless Reed talk about that? There's what I call the shadow migrant crisis. What that is, family, is what you see with your own eyes versus what they tell you. Look at your Twitter timeline and then look at NBC, CNN and CBS. Tell me if they match up. You don't see them ever talking nothing about anything when it comes to migrants. They act like it don't exist. The Democrats told us that Venezuelan gangs are not taking over apartment complexes in Colorado. The citizens say that's what's happening. So the very fact, family, that reality and fantasy are in this political election, you already know where the Democrats are coming from. You want to know what Kamala Harris's four years as president will look like? Look at the last four years and then you go ahead and add some steroids because it's going to be worse. And it's going to even be worse, family, because now they see we're on cold, so they're going to turn up the volume. Oh, they're not going to come at us like the last four years. 
they're going to ramp that all the way up because we don't show them that we are not rocking with the Democratic establishment. If they wasn't listening before, they damn sure listening now. Right now, they're completely up against the ropes. They're going to try to come down so hard on black Americans if this woman is forced into presidency. And remember, I'm going to keep saying forced into it. All right. We're not going to forget the finesse and we're not going to forget the type of things that these people do. Immigration is a trillion dollar industry, y'all, a trillion dollar industry. And it's multi-continental. If you think for one second that they want Donald Trump to win and to deport all these people that they spent trillions of dollars bringing into America, you're crazy. They're not going to go down without a fight, y'all. They're not going to go down without a fight. You're going to see some real funny things. Let me go ahead and put this while it's recorded and while the world's listening. They going to try. They going to damn sure try. Donald Trump wins. Mr. Mutombo, Mr. Yang, Mr. Sanchez, and Estrada got to go home. And they spent trillions of dollars doing so. All them folks in Chicago that are out there taking all them jobs away from people, all them folks in Chicago that are getting all them resources and them EBT cards, which, by the way, we've seen, which, by the way, also Kamala Harris acts like doesn't exist. All of that will cease to exist, which means somebody's money will cease to exist. And the thing that they don't like right now, y'all, is that we have the power to dictate the future of not only the Democratic Shields, but the whole Democratic establishment. We got the power to do all of that. We don't vote Democrat, they go out of business. I'll take that every day of the week. I will take that every single day of the week. That's why they're scared right now. That's why you see Marcus Lemoy Shield, he was shaking. That's why you see Joyless Reed. This shows you, family, that they're quite afraid because the people that they do not like the most, the grassroots, are the people who have the most control over their employment. They will be in unemployment line if we make sure that we stand on business this election and we make sure that they do not win. That's the bottom line. That's the reality. That's what we're pushing. We're standing on real principles, real principles, and it's all about bringing down the Democratic plantation. That has to be right now the number one goal. Not to mention, you guys, who's been out here elevating these people above us, the Democrats, who are the ones who completely crippled the reparations packets out there in California, the Democrats. Name me one area of American existence for us where the Democrats aren't the number one blockade. Let's be real. I don't want to hear nothing about, well, what about Donald Trump and what about the Republicans? We don't vote for them at 90 percent. Who you vote for is the ones you give your smoke to. The ones who run around here and tell you we all's blacks and we all's friends and your ancestors had to, to die for you to have the right to vote. Them are the ones who are going to get the smoke. All right. The Republicans, when we start voting for them at 90 percent or they're in office, then they'll get the smoke. Until then, who's right in front of us? Who's the ones trying to always insult black American men and women? They are. Who are the ones out here saying they're for reparations, but are trying to cripple reparations? They are. They're going to get the smoke and we're not going back and forth with them. They can come up with any name, any type of phrase. We're going to reject all of that. Because it's all about us right now. It's about us getting what we want. And I'm one of the people who stand on the front line with all my brothers and sisters. And this is about us getting our tangibles and our resources. We're not waiting another four years, y'all. We're not waiting another four years. Who the hell knows what happened then? 22, 42. You want 42 million illegals, y'all? You want that? Okay, because trust me, they're not coming over here to be friends with us. And we know that. You cannot wait for the Democrats to ever acknowledge the immigration crisis on black people. When you really want to go there, Who's the only person who's even mentioned one time in this election cycle that immigration harms the black community? It's not the party that we vote for 90 plus percent, and it's none of their shields. The only one who's mentioned it is Donald Trump. And then when he mentioned that they come over here and they take black jobs, the Democrats got mad at him and said that was a racist statement. Family, how is it a racist statement? When he says something that is absolutely true and you can look at all the numbers and statistics and it proves it. Every single sociologist has looked at the paperwork and it shows that immigration harms black Americans the most. The Democrats know they just don't give a f Let's make that clear. They know goddamn well. You know goddamn well. We all know well. We're not going to play this game. These people come over here and they take our jobs and they're elevated above us. Now, it's funny. He said that illegal migrants come here and they take black jobs and Latino jobs. And it's funny because the Latino community, they understood what he was saying. The Latino community was like, yes, they're right. They're right, Mr. Trump. They do. So how the hell did the Latino community understand that? But the black Democrats did. How the hell is the Latino community more anti-illegal immigration than the black community? It don't make no sense. They're more willing to send home their aunts and their cousins 
than black folks are to send home their ops and their enemies. And that all goes back to the Democrats. Oh, what you mean, black jobs? You know exactly what he means by black jobs. So when they get Donald Trump to come to one of their events, they didn't ask him no real questions. They didn't talk to him about tangibles. First thing they did, they attacked Donald Trump. You literally have a political system where the Democrats act like they're arbitrators of blackness. This is what we got to address. They act like they are the arbitrators of blackness. They do not have power over foundational black Americans as a lineage. The older generations granted these people so much money power over our community where they think they own us and what's black and what ain't black is all dictated and determined through them hell no this is bigger than just one election family this is about us taking ownership of who we are and if that means that we got to crash the democratic establishment in the process you damn right and if that means that you want to go vote for donald trump do it if that means you want to vote for the couch do it the rocking chair do it i don't give a damn has to be the people who block us getting out the way. And they're going to come up with every excuse, every alibi, every justification. I don't even want to hear what the Democrats got to say, because I already know what it's going to be ahead of time. I know they're going to say misinformation. I know they're going to say Russian bot. They literally just have terms that basically mean you don't agree with me. You're stupid. And they don't say that to the Latino. They don't say that to the they don't even say that to the Palestinian. Palestinian has been running around here yelling at Kamala. Listen, I've seen it. I've been to her rallies where they were having a cook off and they were dancing and they were playing. And the Palestinian stood up and she was being nice to him. Black folks say something she want to get an attitude. They made it clear, family. That's where we stand in that. That's where we with it. And we're going to continue to represent that to the fullest. So let's continue. Anybody want to come up? We're going to go to work. Anybody got something to say? Let me know. Y'all know how it is when you rock with Black Alpha Network. It's always going to be a real time. All right. See, here's the thing, y'all. They think we the people of color. They think that we're the minorities. We ain't none of that. We wholly different family. We're on a whole different time and we're not moving on that. So therefore, we're pushing how we want to do. We're saying what we want to say and we operate in how we want. Hi. Go ahead, Boykin. Could it's I on you. <laughs> I got you. Go ahead, family. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, you sound good. Great, great, great. Listen, um, Washington State is also experiencing mass migration. A lot of people... Uh, forget about it. It's because it's hidden. You see what's going on in New York State, New York City, it stays in the news. You see what's going on in Chicago and Illinois, it's in the news. You don't hear anything about Washington State, and it's just as bad here. We have illegal um, immigration, but it's much more sophisticated and more covert. And especially when you have not one, but two congressional representatives who are up for re-election at this time, who turn the other way. I live in a, a Congress member's district. She's been working She's a corporate lawyer by trade at the expense of the very well-educated black Americans who basically built the tech sector over here. OK. Um, and this is a pivotal election because of the demographic shift and the generation shift. And the Democrats don't want to understand that it is the young, professional, black American entrepreneurs that are changing things where I am locally. You've got men and women. I'm serious. They've got high powered degrees. They are building wherever we are. That's who's building the 20, the 30, the 40 somethings are building and they're not taking any excuses because recently in a local publication, uh, I'm just going to shout it out. The South Seattle Emerald. They've been exposing a lot of the duplicity that's going on, bringing over these uh, foreign nationals, whether they're legal or illegal, supplanting the local infrastructure. And it's bad over here. You were talking about how ratting out their family members because they don't want those illegals over here. Oh, yeah. Because let me tell you something, not too far from where I am down in Tacoma, there's an ICE detention center and ICE has been going around working in conjunction with the local law enforcement and they're checking people out. And if your number comes up and you ain't got your paperwork, bye bye. And it's to the point now where the local elected leaders like city and county council, they're running scared because the money people who back Trump 
and the third party candidates, they're saying we're not giving our tax dollars over to these people at the expense of building our communities and keeping them safe. We don't want this over here. We know because we talk to the people in Chicago, Boston, Philadelphia, New York City. We know that they send those people over to where I am in Washington state because those Venezuelan gangs, they sent them to one of the suburbs called Kent and they don't play in Kent. They sent them down there to Federal Way and the mayor of Federal Way uh, God, uh, God bless them. They're having uh, basically a revolt because the people in Federal Way ain't having it with the migrants. And I'm not even going to talk about Tacoma, okay? Because they can take care of themselves. All right? So, like you said, Black Alpha, it, it's, it's a new day. People are standing on business and nobody's letting up where I am. They're, nobody's slacking off. So the Democrats, they get their behinds handed to them. Oh, well, it's a new day. Yes, indeed. All right. Peace and love, peace and love, peace and love all the way across the board. My sister Nikki, certified salute to you. You know I see you, family. Much respect. Hey, I just want to send, you know what I'm saying, the biggest shout out to all the Democratic seals listening. You know what I'm saying? Much love and respect. You know, I hope y'all have a great election day. I hope it turned out well for you. You know, I hope that unemployment line, you know, you get in the front row of it. So appreciate all the Democrats listening. I know y'all paying attention. Real talk. They follow me everywhere I go, but it's all love. Keep on watching. Hope you enjoy the show. FBA. Oh, God damn. They, they know what it is. Democratic shields are scared. And we got all the evidence and we got all the proof. They know it. We know it. And that's the most beautiful thing. It's got to be a bad day when your employment is based on what FBA does. You know what I'm saying? If FBA make a move, then you're going to have to make a move. Only difference is, is we going up and they going down. So that's the difference. So when they got to go to that unemployment line and they got to get that pink slip and that eviction notice, and, you know, they don't get them phone calls no more and they can't be a part of Kamala's administration. I want y'all to blame us. I am a proud FBA and I'm taking full responsibility. All right. They're they going to blame us anyway, family. So let's go ahead and make sure they know we did that. That wasn't Trump. That wasn't Ann Coulter. It wasn't Fox News. It wasn't the right wing. They don't like the fact that we call out everything that they're going to do before they do it. That's what they don't like, y'all. They're used to having free access to the community and being able to do whatever they do, you know, without anybody really checking them and regulating them. But this is a different time and a different era and we got you know a couple million foundational black americans on code uh, and that's what's got them shook these people been running around here trying to place these people in our communities they've been running around here being very tight about it being very secretive about it they don't like the fact family that every time you see something happening with a migrant is usually a foundational black american who's recording it OK, we've been the ones getting out all of their secrets. They don't like the fact that when you see brothers and sisters turning up in all of these cities, going to these city councils and they regulating against the migrant crisis, it's foundational black Americans. You don't really see people from other communities really doing the checking of what's going on. They don't want us here right now, y'all. They don't want none of y'all listening to this. They don't want me speaking. They don't want my brother Tariq speaking. They don't want nobody in the grassroots, the foundational black American, new black media. They don't want us here. They wish, they pray when they get on their knees at night. They say, why come foundational black Americans just don't go away? It was much better when we had the POCs because they did everything that we told them to do. It was much better when we had the minorities. When we had them calling themselves African-Americans, it was a great day. Please let foundational black Americans just go away because they messing up everything. They messing up the election. They messing up this immigration invasion. They messing up all of the reparations because y'all know damn well they want to slide reparations to everybody else, but they don't want to give it to us. So since we was going down the timeline back like we never left, we was talking about all the violations that the Democrats have done. Yes. One of the main things, family, you see they doing right now. Joe Biden pops up and he starts apologizing to the red Native American Indians. They trying to troll us right now, y'all. They trying to troll us right now. He pops up and he starts saying, you know, the biggest sin in the world was what happened with them people. OK. And then on top of that, remember Kamala Harris just this week. Shout out to you, Nikki. You posted it. Kamala Harris straight up said migrants built America. On top of that, Joe Biden already said illegals built America. So they go on the complete opposite of where we're heading with it. And this is why, family, they know. 
the clock is ticking and they know when it's all said and done and the dust settles and the smoke clears, there's going to be one lineage remaining and that's foundational black Americans and you won't even be able to see the democratic plantation. It's all over y'all, but let's keep it rolling. Let's keep it rolling. I got my good, good, good brother, great black shark in the building family. It's on you family. What's going on brother black alpha? Can you hear me? Okay, black man. You sound great and strong brother. It's on you family. Cool. I hope your family's doing well. Now, continuing in the same vein of what you were speaking on here about these disrespectful Democrats, I concur wholeheartedly with you as foundational black American freedmen, men and women. We must be prepared them the same way they've been doing our people politically and stand over them and say, yes, we did this to you. You damn right. You're not going to be shaming us like, see, it's your fault. Let me say this to everybody under the sound of my voice. And intelligent people will practice what Dr. John Henry Clark said is the essential selfishness of survival. No intelligent people would sit here and keep vote, being the tree voting for the acts over and over and over again. Because, see, for those of us that are Gen Xers and older, we have to think about more than ourselves. We have to think about the legacy of our children, our grandchildren, future generations, everything that we're dealing with here. This is what I do thank the Democrats for. They've created a generational synergy between Gen X, Millennials and Gen Z, where we're all on code across the board. So their only go to play was to try the gender warring tactic. That's not going to work because our sisters and this is what they feared the most, because they've counted on a lot of our sisters by playing to their ego and putting them above foundational black American free men in a sense as a war tactic against the entire community. But the reason why that's not going to work anymore, our sisters are starting to pay attention to policy and math. And they're like, listen, wait a minute. Why should I sit here and be the stepping stone for all these other groups of people? And our sisters are looking at their women. They're like, wait a minute, are getting my tax dollars that me and my community can't get. And then I'll land with this. Democrats is a, is a game over for you because you keep saying that black women are the backbone of the Democratic Party. Well, the backbone is an essential support structure for the entire body. If you don't take care of the backbone, the entire body falls. So it's game over. We're on code across the board. Keep doing what you're doing, Brother Black Alpha. With that said, I will end. Certified salute. I love hearing that brother talk right there. Hey, much love and respect, family. I love that right there. Good point. They talk about the backbone. Well, the backbone that came home, y'all. And it's completely shattered the Democratic plantation. Much respect, family. I couldn't put it better. Y'all know I like to talk, so I'm going to go ahead and give it on up, family. I did enough of that, and I know the Democrats is watching. So from one good brother to the next good brother, this is my brother, Harriet Tubman's Pistol. It's all on you, family. Talk your talk. Peace, power, and lineage-based reparations. First, I wanted to talk about the be respectful to the room and speak to the topic. Vote against Kamala Harris, no matter who. I'm down with that, family. I'm down with that. Definitely vote vote against Kamala Harris. Definitely vote against the the Democratic the Democratic Party and these Democratic shields. See, they thought we were playing out here. They thought it was a game. No, family, we standing on our lineage. We standing on our culture, and we're having an American freedman political renaissance right now. We having an, um, we having a foundational Black American political renaissance right now. We having that political renaissance right now. Black American political renaissance right now, and it's not never going to end. It's up from here. We want to be what Malcolm. We want to be Malcolm X wildest dreams when it comes to doing politics, and that's us being politically independent, and for us voting policy over party that's the energy right now and let me speak to kamala harris kamala harris democratic party y'all need to go to the nfl and get a new playbook because that 2008 one is outdated that 2012 one outdated y'all keep trying to play us but we on a whole new playing field the nfl don't even gotta feel like this stop playing with us we on a whole new game. We got a whole new game plan right now. See, what they want to do is they want to they want to silence us. They want to take our first amendment rights away. And y'all not going to be able to silence us. We going to keep our freedom of speech and we going to keep on disseminating this knowledge to our people so we can elevate the culture as we move forward. We have decentralized politics. We have independent minds and we're not we're not turning back. Now, I know y'all hear us, Democratic Shields. 
We've been advocating for reparations. We're not waiting, like my brother, like my brother up here talking about black out the black alpha network. We're not waiting another four years. No, we've been waiting centuries. All right. We've been up here talking about an anti-black hate crime bill and working on that behind the scenes. It's already written. You know what I'm saying? We just find some. We try, trying to find somebody to uh to sponsor it. Stop playing with us. We want to be delineated properly on the United States census, and we're not taking no for an answer, United States of America. And we're doing this the right way. We're doing this the right way, and we're going to continue to do this the right way. See, we are the foundationals of this land. We're foundational black Americans. Our ancestors built this land, and that means something. And for y'all to think that y'all going to bring people over here and put them in political um, political positions to disrespect our lineage, elevating them over us, and make us the permanent bottom cast in the country that our ancestors built into perpetuity, into perpetuity, y'all done lost y'all damn minds. Who do y'all think y'all are? The disrespect. The American freedmen are going forward and we're not playing games with anybody. This is a political royal rumble and we're going to be the last men and women standing. I'm going to land on this family, but you know I could keep flying in this black horse hawk and keep going, family. It is a new day, United States of America. The American freedmen are moving forward and we will not in our own homeland in any way, shape or form. America owes a debt to us, a debt of lineage based reparations. And it is time to pay up. It is time up, United States of America. Peace, power and lineage based reparations. All day. Said it great. Woo! Started off on fire, brother. Started off on fire. I got two solid brothers up here holding it down. We came right with it. Notice that, family. Every time they do something to us that's off code, we get more on code. So they think that they're going to try to play us and, like, knock us off track. Every time they've done that, y'all, we come back stronger. That's the beauty of being on code. See, being on code is not just waking up and everybody moving in sync. It's also we got to counter for everything they do. Black folks back in the day, they used to have the dominant society throw something at them and they go take a nap for 10, 15, 20 years. We don't do that. All right. We don't even get knocked down. You feel me? We keep it going. We keep pushing. We keep going forward. If they ever try to do something to us that we know is off code, we're going to come back stronger. That's what being on code is. Being on code is coming back stronger, more faster, more sync, more powerful. And you can already tell by the energy that's what's out here. It doesn't matter who you are. Whenever you start speaking on behalf of the lineage, they're going to come at us with some serious smoke because unlike ever before, we have a power to dictate the future of what happens to them. See, when black folks used to just talk and nothing would really happen, they would just let you talk. Go back to 2020, y'all. Everything we say now, we were saying in 2020. But 2020, they was kind of dancing around us. They ain't really say nothing. Go back to 2016. Go back to the Yes, We Can era. Black folks would say whatever we wanted to say, and they would just kind of act like, well, ain't nobody listening anyway. Now, we got the loudest voice in the room. This whole election really has been about foundational Black Americans versus Democrats. Can we just go there? Can we really just say that? We were the first ones who said that Joe Biden was 5,096 years old, and he needs to drop out. Don't forget, y'all. Joe Biden was running around here and the Democratic Shields were telling us that he was perfectly cool. He needs to stay as president. He don't need to drop down. We were the ones that were talking about how old he was and he falls going up the stairs and he falls standing still and he's doing all types of Mr. Magoo outdated nursing home stuff. We were the ones saying that. Then guess what? He dropped down. Then they try to give us Kamala and they start trying to say, well, Kamala's going to do this for black women. Black women immediately came out and said, nope, reject. No, 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 no. We ain't on that time. Y'all, once again, go back in the past if you want to play them games like my brother was just saying. Now, all of a sudden, then when they try to put this jacket on black Americans that this was going to be the black American save the Democrat thing, because they were already ready for that, y'all. They was already ready for the black Americans going to have to save democracy, the same old, outdated, tired talking points. That's what they was trying to push on us, that we needed to save democracy. They realized, family, within the first week, that wasn't going to happen. You want to save somebody, save your damn self. OK, we ain't looking for no one to come save us. Somebody come swooping down and then you'll take us off into the sky. Black Americans saying we're going to do for self like everybody else does. Don't be mad when we show up to the party because y'all been at this party having a jolly ass time and y'all been bringing in everybody else having this jolly ass time. Y'all was just trying to keep us out the paint. We in the paint now. We are the loudest voices, y'all. Kamala Harris, I think it was 22 days before the election, had to come out with an agenda for black men. And then she had to go around to all these new circuits. So basically saying she had to leave her election 
uh, campaign where she was talking to all the women about abortion. She had to leave that and then go try to cosplay for black Americans. Then we rejected that. So we reject the cosplay one, two, three, four and five. What do they have? Nothing. We are the ones controlling and dictating this whole election. This has turned into really something they shouldn't have really tried to make it. They would have been better just having this about Joe Biden and Donald Trump. That would have been better. But once they put the emphasis on Kamala being black and black people are going to win it for, and they found out that they're not getting them results and they better go get themselves a refund, then it flipped and it shows you that we're the ones in control and we're the ones who have the power. You're seeing the poll numbers right now. Every week they're trying to put out new poll numbers. They're saying, well, Kamala's this, Kamala's that. And it's not just because of what Trump's doing. It's because of what we're doing. There's no motivation. Brothers and sisters is completely protesting this election. And we're completely protesting the Democratic establishment. So if you look at it from this aspect, the fact that the couch is a presidential candidate, the couch has never been a presidential candidate. Never. And then you got other brothers and sisters say, I'm going to vote Trump just despite the Democrats. Y'all remember in 2020, they told us vote for Joe Biden and hold him accountable after the election. Well, I think a lot of brothers and sisters say, I'm going to vote for Donald Trump and I'm going to hold Donald Trump accountable after the election. How about that? Then? Let's say the same thing they told us. I'm going to vote for the couch and I'm going to hold the couch accountable after the election. I'm going to do everything that I can to let the Democrats know we're not going down there in the rain, sleet, hell, snow, voting for you blindly, pulling that lever back and not receiving anything in return. We are demanding uh, tangibles. We are demanding resources. And if you do not give that to us, then you're going to find out come November 5th, which is about a week away, that FBA ain't nothing to f with. All right. I see somebody else in here. Let it be known. Go ahead. Hey, good evening, Black Alpha Network. Great work you've been doing out in the streets. And Marcel, that was an awesome video. I want to tell us, keep this same energy into the midterms. We got to have a consequence for every event. Um, I'm starting to feel like, wow, this is much, much bigger. And the globalists are busy out here. But yeah, let's keep this same energy into the midterms and let them know that this is a brand new day. I hope more and more people follow Marcel's lead and um, consider running for office. But yeah, let's keep going. Let's go and get this out. Thank you. <laughs> Much respect. Much respect. Hey, I love nothing better than hearing a foundational black American woman go in on Kamala. I, that's just something special to me. I love it. I love it because y'all know how they try to play our sisters. Let me say this as well while we up in here. We deep family. We got 100 plus people here. Let me go ahead and say this. The thing that the Democrats do, their number one tactic is to basically act like black American women don't exist. Who talks for black American women more fraudulently than the Democrats? They always put these save the election on our black American women, the save democracy. And then they come here and they have policies that are absolutely anti-black American women. They act like Stacey Abrams represents all sisters. They act like Sonny Hotson, who, by the way, is not even a black American. But that's another story. They act like these are the representations. I mean, in their eyes, Kamala Harris is black. So doesn't that tell you everything you need to know about the Democratic establishment? I'm loving again. As I said, we got the loudest voice in the room. I'm loving it again because now our foundational black American sisters like my brother, great black shark alluded to. They're letting it be known. Democrats, you don't represent us. You do not speak for us. We are the only people in America where a political party acts like they are our spokesperson. Who's the spokesperson for the Latinos? Who's the spokesperson for Asians or who's the spokesperson? Democrats are not our spokespeople. They can't come around to be the arbitrators of what's black. They don't just speak for us politically. They talk for us socially. They try to tell us who's black, who ain't black, what laws we get, what we need to have. Do y'all know we are the only lineage in the United States of America that gets told you're not allowed to have anything politically specific? You don't see that when you go to other communities. You go for two minutes in another community. They don't teach their kids and their kids' kids. You're not supposed to demand anything. That is literally the contradiction of what politics is. Now, you know, as a two year old, politics is I vote for you. You give me something in return. Don't let these people tell you you can't demand something specifically. That's what the Holden Martins of the world run around. That's what Joy Reid runs around. Bakari Sellers. They want us to never demand nothing. No other community operates on this level. Family. Based on the past, based on the bourgeoisie, and based on the democratic plantation, we have all been sold lies politically. There is a grand awakening, okay, that's going on. Like my brother said, it's a renaissance. It's deeper than just the democratic plantation going down the drain. It's also us being politically literate opposed to illiterate. Back in the old days, folks didn't know what the hell they was doing. 
They was going down there and saying, Massa said vote blue, I'm voting blue. They didn't ask for nothing, they didn't demand nothing, and they didn't get nothing. This election, why you see them all in disarray, is because we're demanding that we receive tangibles in return, real tangibles. All right, Kamala Harris tried to give us something. We said, no, that ain't good. We combed through it. We said, nope, 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 wrong, wrong, wrong. All people, every other people, and it don't have nothing to do with us, you take this back. You know, she don't talk about that black agenda no more because she already knew. We see that as a fraud. Four days, four days that was, you know, active, and then we sent that back. They send out Van Jones talking about the love letter to black men. Van Jones, he probably writes love letters to black men as well, okay? And it's not political love letters. So that's what I'm talking about. These people do not represent us. They do not speak for us. They are not the arbitrators of blackness, and the Democrats don't walk around here, and what they say our lineage has to do, we got to do it. That is insulting, and that's done. That's a wrap. They can take that all the way back home, and we're going to continue to make sure that we are the spokespeople for our goddamn selves. The same way every other community has, it's the same way when you apply it to us. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, y'all. We're not asking. We're not pleading. We're not praying. We telling them what it is, and they better do what we tell them. If not, they will see the consequences come election night. And I'm not just talking about this election. I'm talking about every single other election moving forward. My brother Harry is fired up, family. Go ahead. This is to the celebrities. This is to the celebrities. Y'all looking bad out here. Y'all not. We not celebrating y'all. We not celebrating y'all. We celebrating Harry Tugman. You know what I'm saying? We celebrating Malcolm X. We celebrating our ancestors. We celebrating MLK. We celebrating our brothers and sisters in the movement right now, putting on for our people in a real way. So all y'all celebrities endorsing Kamala Harris, it's not going to work because social media has, again, decentralized y'all. Y'all don't got the luster that y'all have anymore, that y'all had, had in the past. Y'all don't have star power. You know what I'm saying? My brother, my brother Black Alpha got more star power than y'all. My brother Marcel for Congress, he got more star power than y'all. Those are the celebrities that I'm looking at, uh, that I aspire to be like, you feel me, that I'm looking at. You know what I'm saying? The ones, the, the people who are in the movement putting on for our people, those are my celebrities. I don't know what y'all talking about. Forget the movies because they don't represent us these days. Anyway, they not talking about our struggles and what we going through anyway in the music and the culture, how it's supposed to anyway. So we right here in the grassroots putting in this political work for our people. These celebrities are not our leaders. Another thing that they keep talking about, family, is that misinformation and disinformation. It's only misinformation and disinformation, quote unquote, coming from the grassroots when y'all can't control our messaging. No, y'all not going to control our messaging. George Orwell said, during times of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act and we will keep being revolutionaries telling the truth family one of the greatest things that we did in this movement is delineation no we're not people of color no we're not black indigenous and people of color all together we're not bipoc no we're not black and brown no we stand on our own we stand on our lineage we stand on our culture we stand 10 toes down politically and we politically astute and we not taking no for an answer we can stand on our own because we've been standing on our own ain't nobody ever came to save the american freeman and nobody's going to and we not expecting nobody to see what we've been experiencing is what is called economic hit men and economic hit women you can read a book called The Confessions of the Economic Hit Men by John Perkins. There's people that's coming over to America, undermining us, destabilizing our country, and the, those who are the quote-unquote elites here are here to benefit off of it, and they benefit over our oppression. This is our civil rights movement, the delineation movement, the reparations movement, the hate crime bill, the black American hate crime bill movement and all the things that we're fighting for. The last point that I'm going to make is that, see, what the Democrats have been doing during this election is they wanted to divide and conquer us with a gender divide, splitting up black men and women. But what they fail to realize is that we are on code more than ever right now.
See, they thought that we were going to be on these political, on these social media platforms and YouTube or what have you playing, watching basketball, watching sports. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. But they thought that we weren't going to use this as effectively as we, as we have as a political apparatus. And they can't stand it. And you know what, family? They not going to stop it. This is just the beginning. This is the Freedman political renaissance. I say again, the American Freedman political renaissance is up and is stuck. Peace, power, and lineage-based reparations. That's the energy right there, y'all. That's the energy right there. Y'all notice when you out and about and you in public or when you in these spaces, when you see in foundational black Americans, there's a fire. OK, there's a look in our eyes. It's the I'm not playing no games no more. All right. We ain't got 100 years to be playing, y'all. We ain't got two days to be playing. We got to let these folks know right now because they're anti-black every single day. So we got to be foundational black American empowerment, quadruple that. And that's the energy you are seeing with brothers and sisters everywhere. And now we're putting it in the political field. All right. Socially, politically and all of the above. Spiritually, we're letting them know that we speak it. We believe it. We receive it. And it's all coming to the originators, foundational black Americans. And it ain't going to change. My brother, great black shark family is all on you. I wanted to speak to a couple of points that you brothers just brought up there. Salute to the brother Harry Tubman's pistol and everybody else on the stage and in the audience. Number one. I'm glad that you brought that up about Van the Crime Man Jones, because think about it. You don't see his equivalent and see moving right along to the point you were bringing up about nobody speaks for foundational black American freemen women. Democrats, I'm going I'm to play devil's advocate real quick with something. OK, sit black man to the side for a minute. Never mind us. We're non issue. If you truly claim to appreciate foundational black American freemen women, then why don't we see you going hard in the paint saying, hey, wait a minute, and why don't you proceed to do something about it? You notice they never say anything about that? But see, that shows you they don't appreciate women because, see, think about it. If you appreciate something, you go out your way to show that person or that something that you appreciate uh, appreciate it. So why wouldn't you try to make sure that our women have safer pregnancies so they can have more of what you claim is the black bone of the Democratic Party? And to speak to what the brother was saying, uh, Harry Tubman's pistol was saying about these celebrities, I agree with you 100%, man. Gone are the days of grown foundational black American freedmen, men and women looking up to celebrities as if we're children or little babies that you jingle keys in front of and get us distracted. We're on code. We're focused on the issues. And there's going to be what I call political punishment from here on out, regardless of the results of this election. By the way, Kamami is going to lose. But what I want to say to our people, going back to another point that you made, Brother Black Alpha, after this is over, we have to be on their next year round. We still have a lot of work to do. And one of the things that the elder Neely Fuller Jr. teaches us is that when we get small victories, we can't sit back and celebrate for a hundred years. No, nah, we got to tighten it up until we get in a position where we're supposed to be in power as a collective. And then once we reach that, the main thing that I want to land on is this. Once we get the power that we're supposed to have, we have to make sure that we perfect ways of maintaining it with economic ownership and making sure that we teach people that whatever we build in our communities, we don't sell it outside of the community. We pass it down so that we can build this generational wealth and keep ourselves from ever getting into the position that we're in now. That's it. I'll land. Appreciate it. Number five, family. Number five, family, there's been more game, more points and more receipts just in these spaces that we have than black folks been having for the last 30, 40, 50 years. There ain't no power in just doing what you told to do. There's no power in telling black folks where well, you can't demand anything. There's no power in that. We move differently. See, your attitude has to change. Like both of my brothers just said, you got to have a change in attitude. You can't be running around here thinking like a child. And I'm glad they brought up the celebrities. The lowest point. In black American political history, and there's been some lows. <laughs> we done seen some lows. The lowest point is when Megan Thee Stallion was twerking for votes in Atlanta. That was terrible. That was terrible. Family, what's the equivalent in any other community to that? Okay. You're literally talking about twerking for votes. This is how they feel about us. They would never fathom doing this to any other community. One, because the other communities would not go for it. And two, because they know they want them people to be seen with respect. 
They want them to be treated with real sincerity and respect. They would never have that type of filth and energy. You don't do what you're supposed to be doing in the strip club on the presidential campaign. You don't see that cross mixed in any other community and you've never seen it. Is it a real shocker that the first time you ever seen somebody twerking on stage for votes was when it came to black Americans, the same community that they give us food. They done gave us food and they done gave us entertainers. And that has been the playbook that the Democrats have been selling black folks for 60 damn years until we showed up. We getting rid of all that one at a time, y'all. One at a time. You can go ahead and bounce with that. So the celebrities got to get called out. All right. The black church got to get called out. All that stuff we praying for Kamala and she running to the church to get the check balance. Nah, uh, uh-uh. we can't have that no more. All right. Anybody who's out here blindly supporting the Democratic plantation, you are an op of the foundational black American lineage. Why? It's because the Democrats are ops of the foundational black American lineage and you're empowering them. They go to your votes so they can elevate you above this community. And this is why we can no longer sustain that type of energy. You're going to win or you're going to lose at the end of the day. And politically, black folks have made too many mistakes until we showed up. See, there's been a whole game that's changed once we showed up. That's why I always say this is the reparations generation. And when I say reparations family, I'm talking about getting money. I'm talking about repairing. We done repaired the mistakes they did socially. We done repaired the mistakes they did politically. We done repaired the steps and all the mistakes that they've done out here when they protest and they rally. We don't move like they used to move. That's why we get different results. When you change the game, they got to change the game. And right now, they have to change the game because we're pushing forward and it's a beautiful day to be FBA. And when you certified, you certified all the time. I see we're going to get to the hands. We got some people in the queue. Once again, anybody wants to come on up, come on up. Y'all know how we do family. We say what we want to say and we make sure that this energy is out in the world because this is the energy that changes the political system. And this is the energy that changes everybody. They ain't got no choice. Um, I see my sister Shay. I don't know if you there, sister. You there? All right. So while Shay gets it together, I'm going to have uh, who else we got up in here. Come on up. Uh, Black Truth United, it's on you. Salute to the family. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Hey, I wanted to salute to you, Black Alpha. This is my first time calling up. Salute to Brother Great Black Shark. Just wanted to touch on a point that he covered earlier. He mentioned that the abortion, that they're for, that the unaliving of children that they're pushing for actually hurts them. It decreases from the, what they call the voter base of the Democratic Party the so-called backbone of the Democratic Party. But all of their policies, if you look at it, policies, when you look at the policies in regards to uh, pushing crime crime bills and, and locking up you know, brothers and sisters, you have fewer voters because they can't vote. So all of their policies that they're pushing for are actually hurting them in the long run, just statistically speaking. And so I, I just wanted to bring that point up. Peace. That's a good point. That's absolutely a good point. Absolutely. You can look at every single thing the Democrats do at this point, y'all. It's not even a secret. You can't even hide the fact that they're anti-black American policies directly or indirectly. You see it. Like you said, in, um, the lack of giving us an anti-foundational black American um, hate crime bill that reduces us. OK, reparations affects everything we do. So when they don't give us reparations, that reduces us as well. They want to keep us, y'all, at the bottom. OK, they want to keep us as the bottom dwellers. This is the game. That's the game. You don't bring in all these means of illegals for that. Now, let's go back to the illegal immigration thing. OK, and ain't it a damn shame that the community that votes 90 percent for a political party is the same political party that's bringing in your replacements. That's the irony of the whole situation. And this is why I say we got to go hard in the paint in terms of canceling the Democratic plantation because they're trying to cancel us. All right. That's what they're trying to do. Don't let Kamala Harris sit there and say, oh, I don't know what we can do about the border. We don't know yet. We'll have to figure it out. Let me tell everybody, the border is not that difficult of a thing to solve. All right. They don't want to solve it because it messes up their plan of getting black Americans out of the way. That's why they play stupid. They're playing dumb. They're acting ignorant. They know what's up. Donald Trump said he's going to institute the Enemy Aliens Act. Sounds like he got a good plan. He's got a way to fix it. How come you ain't Kamala? How come you don't Joe Biden? You know why? Because the plan is never to fix the immigration problem. The plan is to deny it. And they've been denying it. You listen right now to every interview she has. Has anybody ever heard her say one thing? I'm talking about an actual factual solution to the border problem. No, 
She hasn't said it. If you want to see what Kamala Harris's presidency looks like, look at the last three years of Joe Biden. And like I said, you go ahead and then you increase the temperature because it's going to be even worse. And now they know they're really up against the ropes because we coming. We come in. They can't sit back and play games no more. They want to bring in more illegals and more illegals. And I always stress this, y'all. Y'all got to hear me. Kamala is eligible for two political runs, which means she can win in this election and then she would rerun in 2028. All right. And then who's to say that Gavin Newsom, who's another open borders, anti-black person who helped the Black Caucus completely destroy the reparations bill, who's to say that he doesn't run? So now you're talking about 12 years of open borders. Do you know that would absolutely remold and reshape the populace of the American society? And that wouldn't be good for Black Americans. This is what Dr. Claude was talking about, all right? This is exactly what Dr. Claude was talking about. So this is why voting for the Democratic plantation, with them openly saying, we not doing nothing for y'all, with them openly saying, we bringing in every Julio that we can find and every Mr. Mutombo that we can find, this is why they're going so hard right now. This is why they're so upset. This is why they're scared. They're afraid of, because they know all their plans will be ruined if foundational Black Americans Vote for the couch, vote for someone else, and just simply vote against Kamala no matter who. Let's go through the hands. Let it be known. It's on you. Yeah, I wanted to come back and say, make a point about the celebrities and suggested the lowest point was at the rally, the optic with Kelly and Beyonce, and to let let Beyonce know, let celebrities know we're not going to forget this. That optic was horrible. Um, and black women Black American women know that the Democrats, you know, know that they don't care about you. Um, you get rid of the black men. Ultimately, there are no more black women. Um, the Democratic Party does not uplift our men. They don't help us protect our families. So how can they, you know, proclaim that they care about the black woman? And um, I just want us to remember and keep notes on all of these people that upheld this lie throughout this campaign. You know, you will not be forgotten. Holding everybody accountable. Think about that, y'all. They were talking about holding people accountable after the election. OK, well, forget accountable. How about this? How about we just G check and regulate and pack their bags and send them home? That go for every shill and that goes for every single celebrity that's off code. Shay, are you back? Yes. What's up, family? This is Shay in New York. I just want to say I hope that we uh, bridge the gap that's amongst us. And, and I pray that we get closer in this fight, in this battle of uh, uh, America's first, because we are the original Americans. And I know we're going to do what we got to do. And I'm glad to be inspired because I'm running for office, too. And, you know, we got to crease that network and just get up off our asses and do what we got to do. That's it. I'll land there. Respect, respect. And that's the next step, family. Brothers and sisters becoming political free agents and then continuing just to build our own and run our own candidates. All right, let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Um, Is it Hancho? I'm not sure what it is. Go ahead. Go ahead. You just put up the fist. H-U-N-C-H-O. <laughs> yeah, sorry, bro. Like, um, I was just passing through the spaces, but like, um. I do understand the struggle, you know, like, um, you, like, as, like, as, like, black Americans, because you have to realize, like, um, you, you are the blueprint, you know, like, um, you run the world, like, um, the black consciousness, but me, I'm from South Africa, obviously, we've got some giants there, you know, like, we've got, like, um, Steve Biko, Nelson Mandela, like, like, <clears throat> so, like um, I'll, I'll, I'll be sure. Like um, because like right now you're talking about some real, you know, like some Kamala Harris reparations, this and that. This is some real, shit. and then South Africans are the ones who have got no problems for you getting like reparations because we're having the same problems, you know. Like I'm um, with the immigration, you know, they're trying to replace you. They're trying to fight for, like um, they're trying to fight for what you have and the system is trying to use them to replace you because you are the owners because like um you see like america like um they can talk all that like um uh land of the free like um freedom this and that like um the rule of law 
But like, um, if we look at like slavery and we look at like how they treat black people there, it's crazy. Like um, a black person can go to jail for being caught with weed, but like that's a non-violent crime. In other countries, that's not normal. You know, like to go to jail, even if they can't issue, of course, of course, like um, I'm, I'm not saying like even if you get caught with like a kilo of weed or like that. I'm saying if you're just smoking, if they catch you, like you get a warning, you get another warning. Like you wouldn't go to jail for smoking weed, you know, but like um, like nonviolent crimes. It's it's crazy in America. And like um they've got the highest actually in the world. Like they've got like over a million people. Like you see South Africa. Okay, brother. I feel you. I feel you. But you know what I'm saying? I think a lot of people are having a hard time following what you're saying, family. Um, I will say this. That goes on to South Africa, too. Now, we, we got to be honest now. And South Africa is not some, you know, utopia and everything where everything's good. Because South Africa, y'all living in some real huts and some villages and people control 99 percent of things in South Africa. So um, I hear what you're saying about us here. But I'm going to go ahead and say um Black Americans, we, we really living good over here. We know who the enemy is. We know who the ops are and we handle them every day. We're not really living in fear and uh, we're operating absolutely with strength and with power. We're not sitting here talking about, well, they're going to come get us and they're going to hurt us and none of that stuff. So if you're hearing what I'm telling you right now, because I was kind of you kind of losing me a little bit, um, letting you know that uh, we're living better than y'all live in South Africa. You know what I'm saying? Much respect to the people who are on code in South Africa. But no, we're we're good to go over here. Uh, we're not, you know, living in Roots, the movie. This isn't slavery. We're, we're not shook like that. We're stronger than ever. And these people know better when it comes to us. Uh, some of the things that go on with you guys, they would never pull that on us. They're not going to control anything. As a matter of fact, uh, one of my famous quotes that I said in Washington, D.C. at the Rally for Reparations, you go ahead and check out FBAstreaming.com for my big brother, Tariq Masid. You can go ahead and see it. Uh, one of the quotes I said in my speech, I said they may take over Southside Africa. They won't take over Southside Chicago and they won't take over Southside St. Louis and they won't take over Southside Birmingham, Alabama, and they won't take over Southside Atlanta. So that's the point right there. But I appreciate you, homie. I got to go ahead and land your plane and everything. Uh, but much respect, much respect, much respect. Um, yeah, family. So um, no issues with dude, but I'm just being real. He lost me. And at the same time, we're not over here in fear, none of that. And we don't need any of these people coming over here talking about some, you know, over in America, you guys get hurt for walking and scared. And it just makes me wonder. No, that, that ain't how the game go. Okay. We, we living pretty good over here. Okay. We know who the enemies are. You understand, know family? You're living bad when they got you shook, but you're living good when you having them shook. And right now we got them all shook up and they're afraid of us. So let's make that clear. We don't do that head down stuff. We do the head to the sky all the time. All right. Let's keep it moving. We got a, uh, my brother Harry Tubman. Go ahead, family. Now get to the next speaker. See, what we're experiencing now, family, is the breaking of the democratic plantation. We become we we stepped out, broke the chains of the democratic plantation, and have become political free agents. I wanted to um Obama stepping out, uh, Obama stepping out like he our father. He must think that he's Dark Vader or something. Oh, Obama, I got something to say to you, family. What? You know what I'm saying? Like you you not our dad, bro. Like what's wrong with you, bro? Obama, I got something to say, some family. What? Bro, you not our dad, bro. What's wrong with you, bro? I got a dad. We got fathers around here. We got foundational black American fathers in our lives. We don't need you. You good, family. This not 2008 no more. And I hope you got your, <laughs> I hope you got your uh, Kenyan American wake up call because you're not an African American. We don't even use that no more. You're not a foundational black American. You're not an American freeman. Kamala Harris not either. You know what I'm saying? She's just using our lineage as political clout and political capital to garner, garner votes and to besmirch us. And we're not going for it no more. I wanted to talk about I wanted to talk about um, Donald Trump and some uh, some of his some of his policies. Yes, he has a um, a policy for immigration to uh, end burden tourism. So when immigrants come over here and they just try to have a baby when they cross the bar uh, border, no, y'all y'all baby's not gonna just uh, get citizenship no more. Y'all y'all not gonna oh, go yeah. 
automatic citizenship no more. No. The 14th Amendment, that was written for American freemen in mind. Another, another party that, another policy that Trump has is he wants to create something called uh, the American Academy basically is, go is going to bring down the cost of colleges because it's going to be a free college, uh, which is going to, uh, we're going to be able to use for our education. And again, like I just told y'all, I'm not expecting them to teach me my history. Clearly we've learned our own history on our own, but to bring down the cost of college to zero and uh, delegitimize these boule members and these uh, quote unquote colleges that's meant for us, or what have you and the cost of it or what have you for everybody and not just us and uh, put a cultural reset on it I'm down for that family I'm down for the American first agenda on top of that what he's going to do is he's going to um ha have um homeschool our uh, children we're going to be able to homeschool our children and give it um give them what 10 10k a piece per children Y'all be talking about taking off y'all children off these schools anyway. They not quote unquote teaching us nothing. You can go on Amazon, take that uh 10k and buy some buy some books. You can buy uh you can buy uh the color of law. You can buy all these type of all these books that we've been up here read that we've been up here clearly reading. You get what I'm saying? Man, another thing that he's going to do is end veteran home homelessness. He has a policy for uh for that. And my brother Black Alpha Network was just up here talking about this. And we've been talking about this. We're putting policies over the person. What are you doing for us? Another thing that uh that uh oh, that he's been talking about doing more than Kamala Harris ever has been doing. And again, we policy first around here. Policy over party is stopping these wars. I know you don't want your brother, your sister, your cousin, your, your, your uncle, what have you going to go fight these forever wars. And I'm an, I'm an, I'm a U.S. Navy veteran and I'm telling y'all this. I know y'all don't want that. Look, family, we're on a whole new path. I got two more points that I need to make. All you hear from the Democratic Party is abortion, abortion, abortion. Kamala Harris is Margaret Sanger 2.0. Instead of them giving us reparations, they want us to abort our babies. Instead of them giving our black American freedmen, women, better access to health care like they really need it, they want them to abort their babies. Instead of uplifting the black men, American men, the way that they're supposed to, to and give us great policies as a unit, they'd rather split us up and continue this gender divide and keep trying to divide the black American family. See, we're in a whole new wave, family. I'm going to end on this last point. Democratic Party, Republican Party, or whatever party, which is we're going to run ourselves and we're going to run on lineage specific policies, lineage specificity. That means using. Hey, I got to jump in here. Can you? Uh, I'm, I'm almost done. And hell no. You got to go, homie. Get the hell out of here. Go ahead, Harriet. Go ahead, Harriet Tubman. It's on you, family. All right, now I can, now I can speak. You have me muted respectfully. The, see, the going on the days of y'all being able to get over on us, on us. Y'all keep saying that y'all can't do nothing specifically for us. That's a damn lie because we can use our status as freedmen to get specific set asides. Just like I'm a veteran and veteran get specific set asides like the GI Bill called different type of health care and benefits because they have a veteran status. Our status as American freemen or just freemen will get a specific set asides. And that is lineage specificity. That's lineage specific. That has nothing to do with our quote unquote skin color. So they can't pass, they can't pass legislation based off race, but they can do it on lineage and our political status. Democratic Shields, I'm gonna land my plane here. 
We know this, and we're charting a new way forward. Y'all can try to silence us. Y'all can try to sweep this under the rug. But the new black media and the American Freedman grassroots leading the charge. And we not playing. We not playing about our lineage and planting the American flag again and putting on for our people to leave a legacy for the American Freedman for the next 100 plus years. Well, I'm ending here for real. We're demanding reparations. And like my brother Black Alpha said, we're not waiting another four years. We're demanding delineation on the United States census for our, so for our lineage. We're not waiting another four years. We're demanding the anti-Black American hate crime bill. And we're not waiting another four years. Democratic Party, y'all better get ready because we're not playing. Peace, power, and lineage-based reparations. Certified salute, family. Everything you said, absolute 100% positive, dog. Like, I like that because the points that you made bring home everything that we're talking about in terms of this election in all the areas. Family, we'd be here for about five weeks if we talked about all the ways that the Democratic establishment is opposing us. I mean, just look at it. If it's something that can be a political policy, trust and believe that they have an anti-Black American one. There's nothing about the Democrats that is positive for Black Americans. None. And I don't want to hear none about no trickle-down economics. It's been proven that that doesn't work. And if trickle-down economics works, they've been doing that since the 1960s. Why haven't foundational Black Americans went up a notch? Because it doesn't work. And that's what they really want to keep us under. They want us to snuggle up underneath a bunch of liberals, have a bunch of liberal policies, and maybe some of that is sprinkled down on us and then we'll be good. That ain't going to be how it is. See, the plantation is exactly the same plantation that went on during slavery. It's just modern day slavery. That's what you see when you deal with the voting process. We've been living in that reality. They tell us what to do, who to vote for. It's no different than them telling you where to pick the cotton and what cotton to pick on what plantation. It's the same exact thing. Black folks do all the labor and all the heavy lifting and get nothing. That sounds a lot like y'all got to save democracy. It's the same thing. Why we got to always save democracy? Okay, how come don't nobody else got to save democracy? How come the people who are at the bottom, socially, economically, healthcare, we got to save everybody, but don't nobody ever want to give us nothing. We got to share like some kids at a park. If foundational black Americans get one thing, we got to share it with every damn body. And that's what the whole thing is with the migrants. Don't let these people tell you that the immigration crisis is a black issue. Y'all remember that? All right. They tell us so much BS is hard to keep up with. Don't forget they were telling us that the migrant crisis is a black problem. All right. We need to go ahead and ride for all these folks. No, we don't. It's simple mathematics, family. If you got a list in five to one and five is at the top, one is at the bottom. And we've been at the bottom, number one. And it's about 50 million of us. And then they tell us that 22 million illegals are going to come in. Now, we got one piece of bread and we got to share this one piece of bread with 22 million illegals who are bringing anti-Black American hatred from their homeland. How in the hell does that work? And they know that doesn't work. Don't let the Democrats lie, y'all. They know exactly what they're saying. They know exactly what they're doing. Only thing they do, family, is they're anti-Black American and they don't want to get caught. It's how can we sell these black Americans a policy that's to their detriment and make it look good? How do we sprinkle some sugar on it, make it sound real nice to them and make them think that it's going to benefit them? And that's why they've been running around here getting us to support things like abortion. All right. That does not benefit us. That benefits everybody else. And they put some sugar on it and say, hey, black folks, this for you. Oh, by the way, all these migrants who are coming over here who don't like y'all in the first place, we're going to go ahead and give them a policy and that supports you. And then you got these Democratic shields who take their orders. And then they go around and then they tell black Americans, well, this is what it is. And then they start calling us names in the process. I have not been called more names by anyone other than a Democratic shield. Democrat, and they say it over the Internet, by the way, they don't say it face to face. Democratic shields are the most disrespectful people to black Americans. Who is more anti-black American than a Democratic shield? Roland Martin, I literally put together a damn highlight reel of Roland Martin calling black Americans every name in the book. Every name in the damn book. Joyless Reed as well. These people run around and they disrespect us. And not to mention all they men cry on TV. Y'all see the damn K-Hive? In order to get membership into the K-Hive as a man, you got to get your sassy ass on television. You got to cry. As a matter of fact, on that, who do you see cry more on national television? Women or black male Democrats? The answer is black male Democrats. They cry left and right. Every time you see them, they tearing up. Van Jones cried when Joe Biden won. The presidency and Joe Biden uh, lost and then he came back around and he cried again. These folks cry left and right. Bakari Sellers crying. Then next thing you know, Roland Martin crying. 
That's all these people do, family, is they cry, they cry, and they take orders. And that's to shape the image of black Americans as subservient people who do what they're told to do. The Democrats in every single corridor of American society is anti-black Americans. And we're the first generation to say it. A lot of folks may have thought it, but they ain't say it loud enough. We're saying it crystal clear. So the next generation can come in and they can understand we're not going to vote blue no matter who. Because guess what? No one else has to vote blue no matter who. Basically, vote blue no matter who means go pick the damn cotton. All right. Or I'm telling mass on you. That's really what it means. Let's translate that. And now I got some translation for them. When we say vote against Kamala, no matter who, the translation is pack your bags because your ass is about to be out the house. That's my certified foundational black American translation, just in case they couldn't understand it. All right. We got another speaker. Uh, is it Sheila? Go ahead. Come on. New speaker. Come off your mic. Sheila, I think it is. OK. Now, can you hear me? I'm sorry. Yeah, I got you. Go ahead, family. All right. Uh, this is my first time tuning in. Well, actually speaking, but I just want to say, Gen, I'm Gen X. I'm just slightly younger than Scamala. We out here with y'all. I know Jason Black talk about them old ninjas, but we got some old ones out here that's rolling with y'all. So, yes, I appreciate what y'all doing. I'm also a veteran. I tell everybody I know, especially young Ados, FBA, Freedmen, do not join this military. Do not sacrifice your life for this country that does not give a damn about you. And for us, the delineation, I'm all with that because you know what? All skin folk and kin folk. And I'm going to land my plane right there. Much respect. I respect that. I respect that. And I know, I know, I know how it is. I know it's it's a multi generational thing going on right now. This uh, uh the exodus of foundational Black Americans from the Democratic plantation is is multi generational. I told a, a story at my speech in Washington D.C. at the rally for reparations. I told everybody that I seen some grandmothers out in California that was hopping on buses and they was going two hours to speak for two minutes and they was demanding cash payment reparations. I seen that for real for real. So it's multi generational and that's what it's always about, family. It ain't really about every last person. That's one of the things we got to understand. It's not about having every single last black person together. We ain't have every single last black person together when we was getting off the real plantations during slavery. There was a lot of people back in the day that they were saying slavery was slavery. I'm just going to stay here with Master. Why are you running? OK, all the Clyburns. OK, Clyburn is just the nowadays version of the old Clyburn that was scared. He was just as scared then as he is now. OK, but then at the same time, you had the other brothers and sisters that was riding. That's why I say all we got to do in this generation is identify the riders and then we go ahead and we get them and we move. Uh, the certified hundred is what I call it. And that's all we really need. They can have anybody from anywhere. All it takes is us being on code. You give me five foundational black Americans who are on code and we'll do more than 500 who are off code. And that go for anybody in any political affiliation. That's the way we're moving. And this is why right now those poll numbers are looking very, very funny in the light all right they're going to tell us everything right now y'all we're moving in we're about a week away you are going to see some of the most outlandish things out there every single day i'm getting dms i'm getting text messages i'm getting alerts and i'm seeing that the democrats are getting very very afraid but i don't want any brother and sister to feel any type of way about them blaming us good good because guess what they blame us every time they lose there ain't nothing new under the sun the Democrats are going to blame black Americans for every single fault that they have. All right. And then for us to call them out, they, you know, throw hissy fits. That's cool. Then they just going to be some hissy fit having did because we're going to continue to regulate on them. I'm completely proud of the brothers and sisters who are calling them out. And I want my brothers and sisters to continue to do it. And whatever shaming tactic they throw, just know they was going to do it anyway. But you see what happened when Barack Obama came and he pulled that right. Uh huh. We sent his ass. Right on back. And then next, you know, he pop up with Eminem some damn way. We had him running the Eminem, a person that we don't listen to in the first goddamn place. When's the last time y'all was at a party and somebody said a party ain't a party until we put on Eminem? I ain't heard it. Me neither. So that's who he ran to because he knew he was afraid. And to be honest with you, I question the lineage of some of them black folks that Obama was talking to because we checked some of their hairlines and their hairlines was doing the moonwalk. All right. So a lot of them people that he was talking to, there wasn't no black Americans because he even know better. Obama knew that he wasn't going to go into a room of some real brothers and sisters and talk that nonsense. He knew it. So some of them tethers was in the background. Because I always say where you see a Democratic shield, you're going to see a tether. They go hand in hand. The tethers are the ones that they really want to be here to replace us any damn way. So this is why Obama went. And he gave that lecture to them because he knew he couldn't do that to us. We packed him up. We shipped him out. 
Barack Obama, he done took a hit in his brand so big, and that's because of us. And I'm telling you, if this election rolls around and Kamala Harris loses, I've been saying it again, they are going to spin the block on every single Democratic shield, y'all. If you do not like the Democratic shields, they are about to be in hard times because they get paid to try to get us to go back to the plantation. The Democrats are not cutting them no checks if they can't do that. They only got one job to do. All right. Everyone you see, you name the black Democrat. They have one job to do, and that is to get us to vote blindly for the Democratic establishment. If that does not work, y'all, then what ends up happening? They all go to the unemployment line. And it's looking more and more so like it's going to happen. A lot of them, they ain't got jobs any goddamn way. Just go back and look at the last election. Tiffany Cross had a contract with MSNBC. She got a podcast on the Internet now. She done downgraded. Angela Cry, she had an actual contract with CNN. She's on the podcast now on the Internet. Downgraded. Roland Martin has been fired four, five, six, seven different, different times. You know what I'm saying? This man is a shamble. Roland Martin sitting there begging to get put on. These people get fired whenever they do not get us on the plantation. That's why I say we got the power. We've got the power to do whatever we choose to them. And it's all based on that. And that's what's got them scared. They used to have power over us. Now we got them shook. And that's a different world, one that they got to get used to and one that we got to maintain. We got to continue that through this election. Like someone said earlier, through the midterms, then we got to start running our own candidates. This is a renaissance. This is a reshaping and remolding of the political structure of black Americans. It should have been done 30, 40, 50 years ago, but they was too busy voting for the Democrats in the church and singing different songs. We're not on that time. All right. We are out here representing a new wave and a new generation. I don't even care if you're 60 years old and I don't give a damn if you're 20 years old. If you want code, let's move this thing forward. And this is how we get things accomplished. And that is why the poll numbers are coming back. And I'm hearing right now Kamala's polling at 70 to 80 percent. Do you guys understand how catastrophic that is? And trust me, they're going to lie, too. They're going to lie. They're going to lie, fam, because they're not going to get on TV and say, oh, we lost because of the black Americans. The black Americans were on cold, so Kamala lost. They're going to come up with every single spin, twist, and turn that they can possibly do. But it doesn't matter what they do because we're going to completely overspeak them. And that's the way you do it. Sometimes you got to be boisterous. Sometimes you got to just be louder. All right? They talk, we talk louder. All right? They say a few words, we say more. They talk that we talk that real And y'all know that the real always prevails over the bull and that's the difference between us and the Democratic establishment. That's why we continue to work. And that's why if you look, we're getting closer and it's rolling back around. Never in the history of America has the black grassroots had control over the destiny of the black community. It's never been that way. It's always the bourgeoisie. The bourgeoisie was always the ones in control. The bourgeoisie were always the ones dictating to us giving us liberal policies, making us do things that were against our own well-being. It's never been like this. I'm telling y'all, it's a beautiful time to be alive. It's a beautiful time to be alive. Okay, trust me, there was brothers and sisters in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and the 90s, and they was looking for a time where the bourgeoisie had no power and the black church had no power. We get to actually experience that. Certified salute to all of our loved ones who didn't make it to this time, and they was being controlled by the yes, we can era, and they were seeing black folks go in the complete wrong direction because they were on the plantation. They waited for us. They waited for us to come around. Everybody talk about Martin Luther King had a dream. What about the dream of the brothers and sisters in the 80s and the 90s? where they was putting in our communities and the Democrats didn't say shit, but go vote, all right? What about the brothers and sisters in the 90s that seen the hate crime bill that Joe Biden wrote? What about the three strikes that Bill Clinton wrote and brothers and sisters were sitting there being affected by that and the Democrats didn't say shit about that? What about them? That's the dream, family. That's the dream that we talking about. And the brothers and sisters back then didn't get the opportunity to live in this reality that we live in now. It feels different. Anybody who's in here is old enough to remember, go back to the Yes We Can era. It feels different. There's a different vibe, a different frequency, a different energy. We move as a collective. This was not going on 15 years ago. It wasn't. We are moving differently now. The energy is strong. I told you, when you out in the streets and you talking to your own cold brothers and sisters, I met them. I met thousands of them. There's a look in their eye, and it's not to play. And we're letting the young kids know, oh, this is what it's like to be on cold? Damn, okay. Because we grew up and we seen a lot of folks saying, your ancestors died for you to have the right to vote now. Y'all better go vote for that damn Bill Clinton. He played the saxophone. Hillary Clinton got some goddamn hot sauce. The Democratic Shields told me I need to vote blue no matter who. Remember that shit? Okay, them days is done, y'all. That don't even mean nothing. They come around any of our spaces. We run their ass out so fast they can't even blink. 
This is the difference. So we're not just living in a dream of the people had in the 60s and 70s. Now the brothers and sisters that weren't around to actually see the grassroots run this shit. Now we're living that out. And it's very, very important. Won't be no turning around. Yeah, the energy got to be harnessed. Real talk. The energy got to be harnessed because you're right. They're going to come up with every single thing. Family, everything is about them going back to the supremacist drawing board. All right. They throw out some BS at us. We counter that. Then they go back and say, well, we got this new plan for y'all. We got the new plan. We just sat there and watched it. We just sat there and watched it. That's what my brother was just saying right now. Let's go there. Barack Obama comes out. He tries to lecture us. We G-check him. And then next thing you know, two days later, Kamala Harris says, we, we do got a plan. We got a, a black man agenda plan. And by the way, y'all. So the black man agenda plan, that's a specific plan. I thought they said we couldn't get nothing specific because when we ask for reparations, it's they can't do nothing for y'all specifically. When we ask for an anti-black American hate crime law, they say we can't do nothing for you specifically. But when we check Obama, they got a specific plan for black men. And by the way, they jumped over black women. So you see what we're talking about here. The Democratic establishment, they all they do is play games. They play games. Somebody said it before. They don't even know how to respect us. You think the slave master even knows how to respect the slaves on the plantation? He don't know how to respect them because he's never had to. He don't want to. He's got no intentions to. So that's why they've been moving real funny. That's why they've been doing it. And this is why we right now, we're not going for anything they say. Anything at this point, y'all, is going to be a complete lie. It's going to be cap. It's going to be for their benefit. Trust me when I tell you, the Democrats ain't going to wake up tomorrow and say, you know, we, we seen the light, y'all. Y'all was right the whole time. We was mean to y'all. Now we love y'all. Okay, eventually they're going to say that. All right. When Kamala Harris loses, if they don't finesse the election, let's keep that on time. I want this to be recorded and I want y'all to hear my voice. If they do not finesse the election. All right. Because I still believe that is an open door. They may do. All right. Let's keep that real. And you're going to hear about all types of things that went on and names of people who ain't been around voting and all types of craziness. Remember that, okay? But if they don't, Kamala Harris will lose this election, and next thing you know, you're going to have a split. You're going to have 50-50. You're going to have some Democrats who say, black folks, let's go back to the table and let's reestablish our relationship. Then you're going to have the other ones, and they're going to say, see, we told y'all. Now let's go get Mr. Mutombo and Mr. Estrada, and they're going to have a civil war. They already got one right now. And you know what happens when you see Mayo versus Miracle Whip? You get your goddamn popcorn and you watch it. There's nothing better than watching crime, y'all, because it don't concern us and it ends up canceling them in the process. Like I always say, we can stand on business by sitting on the couch. That's what you call certified all the damn time. All right. So they got the, the third party and the fourth party family. We got the couch party and I'm loving it. But let's keep the things moving. My sister Nikki, the God is all on you. Thank you so much, Black Alpha. Hello to everybody in this this on the stage. Hello. Try to understand the mindset of this party and the people who represent them. Try to understand what kind of desperate measures they will use to assure the demise of our people. I will even go as far as to say that we need to stick together more so now than ever before to assure that we have done everything possible to tilt the political balance off the side of the demonic democratic posse. All of us can say somehow, all of us can somehow play a role, not only in this movement, but we can all be worker bees up until the election, but of course it never ends. This means that we can work not just in one place, we can show up to remaining public events and we can also use our voices online to detract the agents that linger among us, whose goal it is to try to leak their messages in and change the minds of people into supporting them with taking actions that assist with the downfall of our people. And I also want to talk to the ladies in particular because I am a foundational Black American woman and the Democrats and tellers do not speak for me. So this is something different, but I am constantly dealing with randoms. Some of these are new women. Some of these are new women and some of them are just newer, a little bit newer. Well, they are walking around these social media spaces and for some reason they keep trying to particularly get close to me. And not knowing how I move, and I have always moved the same way. A lot of them, a lot of people don't know that I have been part of this movement for a very, very, very long time, longer than most. I just don't say, say a lot. 
But back to these women, they come around and they try to dismantle the movement from inside out, not knowing that I always stay on code and I rarely speak on the subject, but I chose to speak on it because we're so close to the election and this party has been making some last minute desperate moves. So these women come around and they pretend to be pro reparations, pro delineation. They start doing everything they can to try and mimic the highly codified women of the movement. Then I noticed that they slowly try to spoon feed some feminist crap in while trying to make it appear that they are helping in some way. Another thing they do is try to appeal to what they know about some of us personally and what they know our sensitive triggers are. One of the examples I have, if you caught the space from last week where I was on Tariq's stage, a woman got on stage talking about how she was taking care of her mom at home and there were insurance issues and this is why she was voting for the Democratic Party. And there's some people who know that I take care of my mom uh, myself and that she's, you know, she's not doing well right now. So it's a sensitive issue for me. So after we spoke to her for a while, the woman admitted to being a feminist. Her story seemed to almost mirror the situation that I'm dealing with caring for my mom. So these people, they come into our spaces with the goal of pushing pro-Democrat, pro-feminist agendas while faking the funk with us. I don't want any of you listening to think that any of these instances are just happening, happenstance, because they're not. Um, it's very purposeful. Um, so ladies, be careful. Because after they think they have built trust, here comes the gendering of the movement and the feminist talk. And before it's too late, you may or may not believe these women are your friends, but they, they are never your friends. Um, this happens to me quite often, and that, I, th that is why I want to let the other women know to be mindful of who you allow to get close to you in this movement. Because it's a lot of things that I'm noticing that I'm been trying to keep my mouth shut about, but they, they're getting on my last nerve because I, I don't know if they think I'm slow or something. But um, looks can be very deceiving. And lastly, about this subject, before anyone gets offended, if you are not a female in this movement who came here for nefarious reasons, then you should then you should be not, not be triggered negatively by my words. And I will end this by reminding everyone to please share this space on your timelines and in your back channels. Thank you very much in advance. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. A special certified salute to you, Sant family. I appreciate that. Absolutely. They coming from every angle in these streets, y'all. They coming from every single angle in these streets. And we got to be on it. We got to be prepared, y'all. Because the Democrats, y'all know, you know, they don't want to go down taking this L, y'all. But we're going to hand it to them. So certified salute to you, sister. Much respect. Let's keep the hands rolling. Uh, my brother, John Horst, it's all on you, brother. Yo, what's good, family? What's good, everybody? Hey, look. I think, to be honest with you, since the Democrats decided they they weren't going to do anything for us for the last, what, 60, 70 years, I think we should do the same, to be honest. To, to be just quite frank with you, we should do the same thing. It's like, nah, they don't just need to lose this round. They need to also lose in 2028. They also need to lose the, the other years after that and the 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 years after that. They all need to lose. They're not going to learn their lesson this go around. So, no, they I'm I'm already looking forward to 2028. Oh, them niggas want to get Gavin Newsom. OK, cool. Oh, yo, yo campaign done ended before it even started. What you doing over there in California? He think he's slick. I know your name. Nah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Go ahead and put him out there. We gonna already just go ahead and crash his cr crash him out right now. Just go ahead. Start who else? Hakeem Jeffries. They gonna try to put him out there. Nope. Uh, you use a tether. Nope. All the, nah. We we see we we already. Like, that's what we already got to do. We got to look forward because that's how they they're forward thinking. You know th that's just how they are. They thinking years in advance, and that's what we got to start doing. So I'm already looking forward to 2028. Nope. They need to lose then too. They gonna try to revamp themselves. They gonna try to you know uh, rebrand themselves and everything like that. They're definitely gonna try to use. Utilize our talking points. <laughs> we just gotta, you know, beat them to the punch. They need to continue to lose until they until they come directly out and say, "Foundational Black Americans deserve reparations, and we're gonna do this." And that's on both sides. I want the Republicans to do it too. That's just me. I, I don't like none of them. I don't, I don't like none of them. I don't even like the Green Party. Jill Stein up there babbling, talking about she don't know what what uh, what delineation and all that. No, they know. 
they is not stupid. They not stupid. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm sitting on the couch. The couch got my vote. Not laying.